Travis. There we go. Great. Okay, so I guess let's start the PowerPoint presentation. Um, Travis, you want to go to the that first slide? See what we have here. So yeah, this is just to introduce the project and to show that the city of Sherwood is working with so many of the, these consultant partners on this important project. So we're glad they're here to join us today. And then we'll go to the next slide, which is the agenda. So really quick today, after this review, we'll have Katie talk about feedback she heard this summer. We'll have a values discussion, what the community's values are for this bridge, a brief presentation overview of the project. We'll talk about bridge graphics, lighting, and kind of a general discussion and then next steps. Yeah, so that's what we've got, got going on there. And then um, actually maybe let's stop sharing a second, Travis, if you don't mind, so people can see each other. Cause I'm gonna talk about the committee protocols document real quick. So Kristen sent all the members a couple page document a few days ago, the protocols document. And that's kind of helpful in explaining people's roles and responsibilities, both for the staff and for you members. So just wanted to highlight a couple items there. The purpose of this committee is to make art recommendations to the project team and your ideas will influence how the bridge concept plans develop further. So I wanted to make, put that out there and staff, we're gonna do our best to give you relevant information here in this presentation so you can give me meaningful feedback to us. And I'll try to hear all members of the group as well as I can, um, make sure I call on everybody. And yeah, we're currently scheduled to meet three times. We might need to extend that. Um, if we need your input later in the process, we'll certainly let you know. But I thought those were some important uh, highlights of that document. And then real quick, Zoom protocols. I'm sure we're all kind of Zoom pros at this point, but everyone's remaining muted. That's helpful uh, to avoid distraction, unless you're speaking, of course. Cameras on are helpful if we're looking at each other, asking questions as a group. And then definitely use the raised hand feature the bottom of your screen or your chat if you've got anything to say and I'm happy to field questions as pr the presentation goes on and I'll try to call on your or address your questions as best I can throughout the presentation. So very good. Um, does anybody have any questions about protocols, agenda or anything? Any questions? No? Okay. Very good. Kurt, could you um, give a uh, kind of update us on where the team is with design at this sure. point? Okay. Sure, be, be more than happy to. Um, so, so we have, we've been uh, moving forward with development of construction documents. Um, right now we're within about three weeks, I believe, of producing what we call our 60% documents. And the goal of the 60% documents is to really clearly define the major components of the project. So structure type is, is pretty well nailed down at this point. Um, we're working through some of the design detailing to allow for better cost estimating. Um, so really the 60% design is really about defining impacts, defining uh, costs more, more completely, defining uh, you know, where, where the project's going. Um, and, and, and next steps after the 60, basically we're, our goal is to essentially be um, completed with, with final plan specs and estimates. So basically getting ready to go to bid essentially towards the end of May, 2023. So that's the, the general overview. I'm sure we can get into some more detail about how the artwork maybe folds into that um, a little bit later in the discussion. Sounds great, thank you. Okay, well, we are ready for Katie actually to give her presentation on what she learned, she and her group learned this summer via public outreach. So take it away, Katie. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, I've um, shared my screen here. And can you, can everybody see this little? Not yet. Not, Not yet, yet, Katie. Not yet. Did okay. you, I think there's, you tap it and then like you, okay. Okay. Oh, here it comes. There it is. Okay. You talked about being Zoom. Uh, <laughs> no problem. Friendly. Yeah, I didn't use it a whole lot, but in any case, okay. So we met in May with Bob um, and it was recommended by him that we go ahead and um, speak to the community in some way and get community feedback um, from those who are actually going to utilize uh, this bridge. And so the following month we had, um, uh, in June we had the art, art walk and 
as we began that, as you can see, there's lots of little dots and we um, combined all the different characteristics of a community so that people could choose what was uh, the most important to them. And the different colors represent different age groups and demographics. So um, we discovered that, and you can see that the highest uh, amount of dots was with nature and family friendly. That was, those were the characteristics that people who live in Sherwood cared the most about being in Sherwood and why they love Sherwood so much. So we thought we, um, so as we discussed that, it, we thought it would be important to make sure that not only natural elements were included in the design um, as far as artistically, but also functionally. So we wanted to make sure um, and, and many people in the community mentioned this, that since nature was so important, it wasn't just important for the, it to be represented, but also respected. So that, you know, doing the best that we could to make sure that it wasn't, uh, you know, there was not a lot of light pollution for animals or for, you know, to make sure that nature is not hurt too much by uh, this process. So um, that was important uh, to many people. And then as far as like it being family friendly, again, not only that that's represented in um, artistically, but also to make sure that it was indeed family friendly. Like you can get a stroller on it. You can get a wheelchair easily on it. Maybe things like little things you can little kids can see, oh, find the bear paw, find the frog, find that, you know, so that there's games or things that um, would be family friendly and helpful for families um, as they're utilizing it. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much the, the, the main thing that most people wanted to make sure that those things were not only represented, but respected and utilized. So were there any questions for us? I mean, we want to make sure also, I mean, this is a very passionate little group and we want to be of service and really want to be available to help mitigate, facilitate whatever that we can do to make this, I mean, this is the, the gateway to Sherwood and it represents who we are and what our values are, um, as I see in the agenda we'll be discussing, but as far as community, they're speaking out and telling us what they wanted. These were the two main factors. So any questions for me or thoughts about that? I have a thought, if that's okay, Tracy. Yeah, please do. Okay, um, I'm really intrigued by the family friendly comments and look forward to further discussion today about that. Aside from being a safe facility and a comfortable facility, you know, just uh, what kind of uh, family friendly type of activities or uh, pieces of supporting infrastructure would support that notion. So we don't have to answer that question now, but I'm looking forward to that discussion. Okay. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, and we could hold that for the the gateway presentation that you give as well, Mike. Doug, it looks like you've got a question. Go ahead. Yeah, I apologize. I, I joined a few minutes late, so this was might have already been covered, but was this feedback um, given and requested specifically in regards to the bridge, or was this kind of generalized feedback that the Cultural Arts Commission did about either, either other topics or just in general? Um, it was mentioned that it was about the bridge, um, but it wasn't highlighted. So there were, it really was about a general consensus. What was the most, what were the most important characteristics to mm -hmm. uh, community members? Why did they love living in Sherwood and what was it important to them okay. as they lived here? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. 
So Katie, great. Thanks a lot for this feedback. This was helpful and lovely to see it visually. If you stop sharing your screen, then we will carry on a bit and just kind of have a full group eye contact, if you will, session. What we heard in the online open house survey that we did, we did two of them, one in the winter, one in the spring, we heard much the same thing in terms of how much the community values art in this bridge and wants it to feel like a gateway, something you unique to Sherwood. So definitely that's something that we want to talk about here with, we'll just move into the next agenda item, which is the values discussion. So yes, this is important. That's why we're here to figure out how we can make this Sherwood feel like Sherwood. And so um, Kristen, do you want to take a minute to mention city council's role in the process before we jump too deep? Sure. Into and values? um Doug may want to jump in here as well, but I think what we wanted to emphasize is this is a project that is very important to the Sherwood City Council and something that they've been working on um, for a couple of years now and some and a project that, you know, if this is our priority to see this come through and they're excited to hear from all of you how we may be able to implement art into the design. Um, as we talked about is the role of this committee, it will then be making recommendations to the to you. But um, I did wanna just pass on their thanks and gratitude to all of you for wanting to participate in this committee and for um, wanting to contribute your ideas. Doug, is there anything that you want to add from city council standpoint um, nope. about I, I think, this process? I think you said it very well and I appreciate uh, being able to to be a liaison from council to all of you and hear, hear everyone's hot thoughts firsthand. So thank you. Great, thanks Doug, thanks Kristen. Good, well, good. If there's no other questions there, then Bob, do you wanna take it away um, with kind of the questions that we want answered uh, today, like talking about values and Sherwood, should we put the next, the slide up with your three questions yeah. or would you like yes. to? The slides, yeah. that, that slide is important, yes. Okay. Let's do it. Thanks, Travis. <clears throat> okay, so when, when we talk about a bridge project, there's the technical side of this stuff, which I deal with with the consultants, but there's also the community side of what this bridge is. And the bridge in and of itself means something. And that is something that the community um, determines. So just as a portal from one side of the highway to the other, that's a technical issue. But what is this bridge and what we are looking for out of you? What do you want to communicate with the type of items that get appended to this bridge project? So there is a message of what does this bridge mean to the community? How does the art or whatever we, we apply to this bridge reinforce that message of what the citizens want to communicate with this bridge? And then the third question is, well, we could do a lot of stuff, but what is too little and what is not enough? Or what is too much? So whenever what we're looking for out of the committee is whatever we come up with for artistic expression, you've got to ask yourself these three questions. Mm -hmm. And that will guide the answer that the design team works with. Hopefully that, that sort of gives you a, taste of where we're going with this and why this committee is is so important to the project the bridge itself is a is a heck of a structure it's a heck of a statement and it's going to be there mm -hmm. but what else does that bridge represent yeah thank you and at this point it would be it would be helpful maybe i mean do you mind maybe um stopping this slides for a second, Travis, the rest of the committee members, would you like to 
give your thoughts on this in addition to what, so Katie has showed what they learned, the greater community, what their values. We talked about family friendly and nature, but what else are committee members thinking? And if it's too early in the process, we can come back to this later at the end of the meeting after you see um, some lighting and you see more bridge design concepts, et cetera. But does anybody want to jump in now, committee member wise? and share what they think. And that's a, go ahead, Mark. Thank yeah, you. so by, um, having seen some of the work that's gone into the, the bridge work thus far for the past year and a half, um, I, I'm wondering, is the analogy that we should have on our mind less about what we want it to look like? Like, I, you know, let's say I'm gonna use a house as an analogy less about we want a house that looks like this and more about here's the house choose to paint because i mean for for all intents and purposes the the bridge the image of the bridge has been decided by the city council we're i think this is to, to discuss what flare what not flare that's the wrong word what uh accoutrements what extra might the community want to put onto the structures, the cables, the pylons, the whatever, or the lighting that's already gonna be there. Is that is that a fair kind of analogy? John, did, do you agree with that? I, wow. Yeah, I, yes, I, I think there's, there's a lot uh, to that. You, you know, the art is gonna be designed in collaboration with the committee, but it's gonna be designed by artists. So obviously we're not, I don't think our, task here is to decide what it looks like or what it is. We want to sort of present a bigger context of how the where the bridge is, is, where it's going in terms of its development, and talk about some opportunities for where uh, some of the art, some the art might go. And then, you know, if, if those seem of interest, then move through the process to engage some artists to figure out what that art is in those locations. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I wanted to maybe just orient my my brain about what, what really the palette is that we're talking about. So you just answered it. Thank you. Good, Good question. Thank you. Martin, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. This question might be a little bit more for Doug. Am I echoing? No, you're quiet, um, but you're not right. echoing. It's OK. All right. Um, so you mentioned that the the city council is very passionate about this project. Um, so I could probably identify a couple of things that they're passionate about of, you know, the safety aspect, the connectivity aspect, um, you know, bridging the gaps, obviously, and, and the livability of Sherwood. Um, is there anything else that you're really excited about? Um, yeah, I mean, I can kind of capture, hopefully, what what the city council as a whole you know has has talked about throughout this process and, and certainly john and kristen and others that and bob have been there all along the way you know can can echo or, or correct me where i miss but I, I mean certainly all of the above that you said have been you know bridging that divide creating this connection for generations to come or first and foremost right and then once you decided like let's push to make this happen let's find the funding and, and we figured all that out then it was Okay, let where where's the right location? Where's the right orientation? Where do the, we want the landings on both edges? And you know, when we looked at some various design options, and we picked the kind of the overall design of of the look of the bridge, right at, at a high level, right the arches and the the undulating. You know, I don't know if you, you've all, I'm sure you've all seen seen that, right? So all of that was important, but but I, I think beyond that, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of passion around. And when we heard this at our last uh, city council work session this past week that this committee, um, you know, had been formed, we were certainly all very interested and excited to see what came out of it. Um, that's how I got here. I'm happy to be here because, you know, I'm, I'm interested and excited. This is all very important to me. So, uh, you know, I hope I'm answering your question. But yeah, I mean, we're all we all care what the end result looks like for all the reasons Bob mentioned, right? This is going to be here for for hundred years or however long this bridge will last, right? So um, I, I think individual city councilors probably have things that they are, you know, or feel are more important or less important when it gets down to like, you know, 
individual design elements, just like all of you on this committee do, right? So we haven't had those conversations at, as a as a council. We haven't voted on anything. We haven't made, you know, any determinations on, on we like this, we don't like that, right? Which is really what we're looking this committee to bring a series of, you know, a rec either a single recommendation or maybe some options to us for for us to discuss and and ultimately you know go forward with so i think there's a lot of interest i don't think there's a lot of predetermined you know decisions that have been made um outside of the large obvious elements that have been discussed and lighting thanks doug does that cover it martin does that answer your question at this point oh, great thank you okay so i'm going to continue on bob did you have any other over project overview elements that you wanted to discuss or are we ready for John's presentation now? What do you think? I think at this point, the, the major thing impacts, so long as you, whatever we're doing, if we keep those three questions in mind throughout the entire process, we'll be doing good. Okay. okay. So keep focused on the three questions. Okay, sounds good, thanks Bob. Well, I think, John, I think we're ready to take it away with slide number five, I believe. Okay. Good. Thanks, Travis. Slide number five. There we go. Yeah. So just, uh, I, th I think everybody on the call is familiar somewhat with the bridge, and I just want to sort of get us all on the same page with a little bit of orientation. You know, after doing a, a lot of study on the alignment of the bridge, that is where it goes, actually, uh, this is what was agreed on. And you can see the YMCA, most people know what they're looking at, but you can see the YMCA building on the right. Uh, the high school would be on the left. It's, it's not included in this model, but nonetheless, it's there. And the bridge, if you follow its pathway, it crosses over three roadways, the highway and then two streets. Uh, and there's all kinds of requirements, uh, including how much headroom you have to uh, provide uh, for, for cars and trucks, obviously. Uh, and then, in between those streets, it also passes over two sort of green areas full of nature. And some of them are stormwater facilities uh, and other things, but you can see there, and there are no requirements for um, headroom there. So we'll talk in a minute about what that means. You can also see on the east side at the YMCA that uh, once you get to that landing at the end of the bridge, you can turn right uh, and go southbound down a, a gradually sloping ramp that bends around the corner and um, lands you on the sidewalk at sunset, just a little bit, little bit back from the intersection. Or you can turn left uh, to go northward and there's a staircase that takes you down and sets you on the sidewalk uh, near where you can connect to some of the trail network here. Uh, and on the west side at the high school, the main primary line of the bridge takes you uh, past the roundabout and then puts you onto a ramp that gradually sets you down on the street and is moving you in the direction to go around to the main entrance of the high school. But uh, midway there, there's a sort of branch where there's another path that, that takes off and ramps down gradually to the south, taking you towards the direction of the stadium and the sports fields and facilities where there are sometimes events. So that's uh, what it looks like from a bird's eye view. If we go to the next slide, here you see a sort of three-dimensional aerial view of that. Uh, we have these three big spans over roadways I mentioned and a very efficient uh, way to span those. And when I say efficient, I mean you can make a long bridge with the least amount of material, which directly relates to cost in a lot of cases, is with an arch. You know, arches, arches have been around uh, for centuries. And so we designed sort of pretty straightforward arch structures to go over each of those roadways and, and the supporting structure curves up above the deck and it leaves the headroom below that's required. And then what we realized in those interim spaces where you're not crossing the roadway, we don't need that headroom. And we took the structure that, that makes the arch and flipped it upside down to kind of make these upside down arch or truss structures there. And the overall effect is that when you see the whole bridge uh, like this, you get this wavy up and down sinusoidal curve effect, which we think is one of the strongest visual impacts of the bridge. And we're working really hard to accentuate that, uh, including with the, the lighting design that Ella is gonna talk about. Um, and then you can, you can see this, most of the, the sort of approach ramps and things that I talked about 
before. And just responding to a couple of the comments that we heard earlier, um, the bridge deck is 14 feet wide clear, which is a very common standard and it makes a very comfortable width for pedestrians and bicyclists to share. And also the ramps that you see to take you up and down uh, to the bridge on either side of it are uh, well in compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act, which means it's, it's great for uh, equity provides everybody access, but it's also very family friendly and very bicyclist friendly because it makes it easy for bicyclists and it makes it easy for strollers, what have you, to, to get up and down and use the bridge. Um, what uh, we're going to talk about when we in a minute when we're going to sort of see some videos is that, the as Kurt said, the, we're closing in on a, a milestone, which is 60% design completion. And with that, we're working really hard with these arch structures to create a very light and delicate uh, tracery, some, some some the sort of intermediate elements that crisscross or go vertically between the bridge deck and the and the steel arches. You'll see a little more about what we're talking about. So that's um, a very fine design. And then we're also working hard at integrating a very light touch minimalist railing uh, into that to provide safety without being too obtrusive and impeding your views when you're on the bridge. And so all that design work together with the lighting that we're talked about and, and our impending deadline makes us feel that probably adding specific discrete art elements onto that structural piece uh, is gonna probably have some impact on the project uh, schedule and possibly the project budget. But we think there's some really great opportunities for art uh, elsewhere where they could have, it could have a really large impact. Um, and a couple of those opportunities are on these approach ramps that we talked about. Uh, I'll show you a little more what those look like. What those railings are uh, hasn't really been defined yet and it could be a pretty wide open opportunity. Uh, and another option that you'll see is that as you're moving across this bridge, you actually have a really nice vistas. It's quite, it's kind of a promenade and you're crossing over streets in some point, but you're also really looking over this natural landscape. And in some ways, it there's really nice opportunities to have the bridge be the viewing platform from which you could view art that is maybe in the landscape or maybe down lower on the structural piers or something. So we could go to the next slide. Just ask you to bear that in mind. Here you see a little more detail, a little closer up uh, at the YMCA end, you can see on the left, the, the ramp that's taking you around the corner and landing you at sunset. Part of it is on columns, the, the taller part near the bridge itself. And then it transitions onto a, a, a bermed earthen structure as it goes down. And on the north side of that, you see the staircase that takes you down hey, and sets you on the sidewalk. John, can I jump in for just one room? really quick second one thing i want to make sure i point out is that the the east approach ramp uh, uh the left side the the ramp itself is not completely disconnected from the corner um there you know basically the design does include a ramp uh, a uh, stair structure that allows more direct access so i wanted to make sure that just hasn't been incorporated in the model yet it's a work in progress yeah so thank you to, yeah. yeah so right right where you start to see the side of that um the ramp that's almost black where it's on earth. There's a, a few stairs that drop you down right close to the corner, the intersection of sunset and the highway. And similarly, uh, on the west side of the bridge, if we go to the next slide, you can see there's a lot of ramp length there. Um, and like I said, what it is exactly, and it's particularly the railings of it have yet to be determined. So some great opportunities there. Uh, let's just look at a couple of videos, one walking across it and one driving under it. And then uh, Ella can take us through what the light in, lighting intentions are. So this is set, it's a little bit rough, but it's set roughly at a speed of a bicycle. Otherwise we, you know, it would be a long show. We would set it at the pace of a walker. But here you see moving up the ramp uh, by the YMCA. It's looking around a little bit. Another thing to point out is that in between each of these arch spans, the, the right side up ones and the upside down ones, there are uh, the bridges supported on some piers, which are these paired concrete walls that you'll see a little bit more. 
And right above them at the, at the node points, there are these little infill pieces where on either side of the bridge, there's a little balcony that sticks out. You're seeing one here. We're referring to them as a, the Belvederes, but they provide a spot where one person or a couple of people could step out of the pathway of traffic and pause on the bridge to do whatever they need to do, make a phone call or look out at the landscape. And that's kind of what I'm thinking of when I mention opportunities to view art that's in the landscape from the bridge itself. One possibility. I think when it's coming across Zoom in everybody's monitors, it might be a little bit jumpy. And then you start to, here you just start to see yourself going down the ramp on the west side towards the high school. And while we have a, a sort of placeholder for a railing in there, it's really pretty wide open what that might be. And could we go and run the video in slide 10? Then you'll see this, this video jumps around, but it, it first shows you coming south on Highway 99 under the bridge. Then there are, there are captions there that orient you as to where you are because there are multiple cuts here. Let me switch to Elwert and on to Kruger. Hey, John, as you do this, can I ask a question, quick question? Absolutely. Are there going to be um, fencing to prevent jumpers of any sort, or is it going to be as it appears um, in these? Yeah, that, 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 that's a great question. So the when, it, when you were over the roadway, the requirement for fencing is typically that it's fencing or screening or something is, is at least eight feet high. Uh, and that's less about presenting, preventing people from jumping and more about preventing people from discouraging people anyway from throwing things over the railing that might land on passing traffic. Um, and then, so you'll, you'll notice if you look at these that the railing is quite a bit higher where it goes over the roadway and where it goes over the landscape, um, the sort of requirement for pedestrians and bicyclists is that it's 54 inches tall, four foot six. And so is the is the kind of the final product of how, of that fencing represented here, at least over the roadways? Yes. OK, thanks. OK, so that, that that's a sort of a brief overview of how the design is evolving. But the lighting is a really important part of it. And there are a, a number, a couple of different objectives that we're trying to achieve in the lighting. So Ella, uh, why don't you go ahead and take us through that? Sure, sure. thanks, John. Um, so, so from a lighting standpoint, we're looking at approaching the bridge with three main layers, I will call them. So the first layer is gonna address safety and security. And what we're looking at doing at the bridge deck itself is integrating lighting into the handrail. So it will be at um, 54 inches, like John mentioned, uh, on both sides of the railing, just something uh, really minimal to keep with the design of the um, bridge architecture itself and sort of not draw attention to itself. The other aspect of the safety and security is lighting the ramps. And for now, until we know more information on what's going on with the railing there, we are looking at probably utilizing some poles, pedestrian scale poles, so maybe 10 or 12 feet tall at most, uh, going uh, from where the bridge deck where the arches stops and where the ramps start on both sides. The second layer would be highlighting the architecture, which would be the upside down and downside up, upright. Anyways, arches both directions. Um, so there's some uh, images there on the slides that kind of represent the idea to highlight that arch going both up and down. And then the third aspect is um, highlighting the piers and sort of helping to anchor the bridge so it doesn't look like it's floating, but that's something that you know we can talk about. Um, and then for the architectural lighting for the bridge and the arches and the piers, I mean, there could be some opportunities for color potentially with lighting. For the safety and security, we're looking at just having a nice warm white light that will uh, be consistent throughout the bridge. 
That's Great. It. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. So that that's that's a very brief rapid fire overview of what this bridge is shaping up to be. Thank you. Thank you, John and Ella. Do committee members have questions about specific slides or the video that we've just gone through after this section? This might be a good time to pause and make sure we don't. We can come back to it later in the discussion, but while it's fresh in John and Ella's mind and our minds, are there questions about what you've just seen? Hi, David Shireman here. Can you hear me? Yes. Sorry, I was late, but um, one of the big things historically in Sherwood has been light pollution. So too many lumens getting up in the air. So I, I hope that's being considered in those lighting options. Uh, in the past, we've done recreation fields and uh, making sure that we didn't have light escaping up in and, you know, blurring out the stars is a is a big deal. And I, I, I would like to make sure that that's in, included in there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Great, okay. Well, if there's no other questions right now, then I think Mike can take it away and talk about the gateway concept. So very good. All right, Mike, are you? You're Still muted. muted. You're muted, buddy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks Kurt and thanks Tracy. <clears throat> What's really unique about this gateway is uh, the scale. You know, we're, we're, the design team is looking at the gateway as being comprised of the landscape between the high school and the YMCA. So there's a lot of open area that will remain open due to uh, public ownership of right-of-way space. And then just the scale of the bridge itself is unique. I ask you to look at other gateways on 99W, look at what uh, Newburgh has done in downtown on the couplet, and then look uh, to the north at Tigard and their gateway landscape at the Main Street exit where they have the filbert sculptures. Uh, those are both very different scaled gateway landscapes. You have a huge unique opportunity here with this one because of just the pure scale of it. So I'm going to show you a couple uh, examples around the state that also get at the scale of gateway treatment. Next. <clears throat> so the city of Pendleton is very proud of their roundup tradition and for their 100th anniversary, they want to create a meaningful gateway on the west side of town as you enter the downtown area past the roundup grounds. And this triangular shaped piece of property before the project began was asphalt, and gravel, uh, utility boxes, abandoned power poles, abandoned light poles, and it was a barren wasteland. And it did not create an interesting uh, entrance to the city. And so working with the community, they came up with landscape features that incorporated softscape el elements like plants and trees and hardscape elements like these uh, basalt walls as gateway features. If you look at the photo on the bottom right, uh, an iconic sculpture of the rodeo cowboy was included in an entrance plaza near the gateway location, as well as just dressing up the streetscape in the upper right, new sidewalks, street trees, uh, new ticket booths that reflected the architecture of the roundup grounds itself. So it was a very complete solution. It was, uh, so think of the scale of this. This was several blocks long, much like what we're talking about here in Sherwood. Next. <clears throat> this gateway reminds me a little bit of Sherwood. This is, we're looking south on 205 to the right. We're looking at Highway 213 that uh, goes off to the left. And between I-205 and the gateway entrance into Oregon City, you have this vegetated buffer corridor that creates a real solid corridor entrance feeling. And uh, just beyond that, there's the monumentation sign that you can see in the upper right with an extensive landscape that's highly maintained and kept in really good shape by the public work staff at the city of Oregon City. Even the roundabout in the bottom left-hand corner becomes a gateway feature. Um, it's uh, beautifully landscaped and maintained, and 
you add up all these elements, the, the natural area of vegetation, the entrance monument, the, the roundabout, all that uh, becomes part of the gateway experience. So now I want to talk about specific elements that uh, relate to art. So this upper left-hand photo is the entrance to the city of Madras on Highway 97. This is a very conventional approach. Where they have a beautiful stone uh, pillar column with a welcome to Madras sign hanging from it. And then a substantial amount of landscape as a background to this entrance statement. And that's a pretty common approach around Oregon on our various highways. Uh, the one in the upper right is kind of unique. This is the entrance to North Portland from the Lloyd District on Martin Luther King Boulevard. And what's unique about it is they took what could have been a small sign and created this very ornamental um, steel fence with, um, with uh, some quote from Martin Luther King on the fence itself. And just the pure scale of this, this is uh, 70, 80 feet long at least. So it's a little bit different from the one in Madras. And so there's just different approaches for how you do signage and monumentation. And the bottom two are uh, gate gateway illustrations from Redmond and Troutdale. Those are very traditional. These are very, very appropriate for like downtown main streets kind of applications. Um, so I just wanted to show that because it is a common uh, approach to doing gateway designs. <clears throat> Next. Landscape uh, incorporates both softscape trees and planting and flowers, as well as hardscape like walls and fences. And just wanted to show a range of landscape approaches for gateway treatment. Um, a lot of corporate parks and a lot of cities and towns use vegetation and monumentation sign as the, you know, the primary gateway feature for their town. So these are a little bit smaller scale than some of the others that I showed you from Oregon City, but um, it creates that gateway effect as well. The other elements are on the next slide, which is sculpture and art. And I mentioned downtown Tigard. They got a beautiful rock wall with a welcome to downtown Tigard sign and they hired an artist to come up with this filbert sculpture. It's very beautiful, it's small scale. It kind of gets lost in the clutter. Uh, most of you drive this route occasionally, and you know it's there, but you don't really see it coming, and uh, not until you get right on it. And I think that's a real big difference from Sherwood. Sherwood, you're going to see this gateway coming down the highway both ways, and uh, it's going to present itself long before you get there. And when I say gateway, I'm talking about the bridge as being kind of the backbone of the gateway experience, but this committee is charged with developing art in conjunction with that. And um, so uh, the approach they used in Tigard was, let's put a piece of art out there to signify our downtown. <clears throat> and you get the double benefit of doing some sort of art, but also combining it with this signature structure, the bridge. And the other two examples are just showing how metal can be used in the landscape to create sculpture or uh, form walls for gateway type treatments. And I think that's it, Tracy, unless there's some questions. Great, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Does anyone have any questions <clears throat> for Mike on the concept, the idea of the gateway concept? Okay. Okay. All right. I have a quick question. Yeah. This is this is Martin. And uh, I guess my question is, in when you talk about the uh, the gateway, are you thinking? You mentioned like the space between the the YMCA and the high school. Is it in between like the two, the Highway ninety nine and uh, one of the roads that goes to the roundabout? I don't think we're limited to that. It could be. Uh, we, when I talk about the gateway going from the high school to the YMCA, what I'm alluding to is that whole distance uh, creates a gateway experience with that bridge uh, uh, running from one side of the highway to the other. As far as uh, how art can be used in the landscape to enhance the gateway experience, um, 
the location of it um, has not been determined. Uh, but it could be anywhere from the right of way next to um, the YMCA or out in the um, landscape between the highway and the roundabout. Is there just to just to chime in real quick, Mike? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's certainly a possibility. I do want to just make sure that I put the caveat out there that that land, the land between 99W and Elwert, is actually a combination of ODOT and Washington County properties. So it, that, that does add a little bit of a complication. I don't, I'm not saying we couldn't make it happen, but it, it would be a little bit of a challenge, but. Yeah, thanks, Kurt. Are yep. there, Martin, does that answer your question? Are you, are you wanting more specific areas where um, landscaping could enhance the gateway experience? Is that the question you're asking? Uh, yeah, a little bit. That does answer my question. And it sounds like there's multiple areas in, during, in the project that could be, you know, landscaped differently or structures or art or however, you know, this committee kind of decides to use it. But I, I, I see the the barrier and the space that I rec that I said. So it sounds like, it, but it, basically anywhere from where the bridge starts to where the bridge ends could be art and structures and sculptures could be considered. Well, Kurt, um, let me try it. Is this, is this a fair reaction? Uh, what Martin's talking about is, you know, wh where would the gateway features or art be allowed to be placed? And you mentioned the constraints of ODOT and Washington County right away. I don't know if that constrains us from using landscape and vegetation as a gateway element as much as it does like sculpture and art and structures. I wouldn't, Mike, I wouldn't be, I would not be all that concerned about it just from, from a technical standpoint of putting even a sculpture in the, that space. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we can we can make sure that we can clear you know the front the technical technical parameters there you know setbacks from the highway setbacks from travel lanes that type of stuff is easy to do. Um, I, it just will add a little bit add a lot of level of complexity with regard to uh, main maintenance of those of those areas. Uh, if it's city city maintained, my guess is we're going to have to go through some hoops with ODOT in Washington County. So again, I don't want to. I, I certainly don't mean to to uh, uh, um, say we can't do it there. It just just add, just add something we got to deal with. I guess that's an element we didn't discuss and it can come up later, but the whole notion of gateways, uh, we have to think about maintenance, right? Yeah. So uh, we don't have an unlimited budget for maintenance and uh, that may constrain some of our um, landscape approaches. And uh, so I showed you some examples of some pretty exhaustive landscaping at the large scale, uh, that's hard to be able to afford to maintain it. And we may have some limitations that we have to think about. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mike. Mark, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, and I don't want to speak for Jim, but I'm guessing the other thing that we need to be mindful of is the school district probably isn't going to want any additional landscape on their property that they would have to maintain. So I, I imagine that landing zone is off limits. I'm, I'm kind of guessing, I don't, again, I don't want to speak for Jim, but um, I wonder. Okay. Thanks for bringing that up. We're actually in the process of uh, how to deal with the property um, that is the schools versus uh, what the city needs for this project. And so um, I think that will work its way out as we kind of finalize those pieces. but. Uh, you're right. I don't want to have to maintain any more landscape than we already do. And we got lots and lots of acres of that. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Thank you. Yeah. Doug, go ahead. You're up. Yeah. If I might make a suggestion along these lines, I, I, I don't know that it's, you know, worth our time to try to guess what is or won't or will be allowed and what we can do and what we can't do on what location. Like we should just come up with the ideas that we like. And if through the process they, you know, some of them aren't workable, then people can come back to us or they can get refined. Um because mm -hmm. we're just playing a guessing game otherwise. Let's dream big. Let's let's put out the best possible idea that we love the most. And and if if it can't get done, it'll get fixed later. 
that's my thought. Thank, thank, thank you, Doug. Yeah, I, 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 I think I let my engineering brain get in the way for a few minutes there. Apologies. <laughs> yeah, if I, if I might, um, again, we're going to do brainstorming on a lot of different things, and I don't want to restrict that brainstorming effort. That's why I'm saying whenever you're doing brainstorming, keep in mind the three questions and try and and see how that fits into those three questions. If you can answer those three questions with what you're looking at, if they make sense as part of that, you know, then I think you've got good solid basis for getting a, 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 at least a second review of, or approval for it because it is something that whatever the cost would be at that point could be supported by the community at large and the city council. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, don't restrict your process of brainstorming of identifying things that fit with the community's concept and goals of, you know, what does this bridge mean? What's the, how does it relate to the city's future? How does it relate to its past? How does it relate to its presence? And, and, and sort of take all your stuff that you're thinking about and seeing and just put it into that context. And don't worry about the cost at this particular point in time. That's a nice invitation. Yeah, thanks. That's a good reminder, Bob. Um, Travis, I wonder if we should stop sharing screen for a moment and then maybe reference it if we need to again with certain visuals so we can see each other. But well, at this point, what, I mean, it's like, let's, I'd like to hear from the committee members what your reactions are, what what you're thinking of, like, there's like different levels here of the values of Sherwood and what kind of art could enhance the gateway experience that we're talking about or the, the experiences that, that this bridge will bring to the community. Um, are there other questions? Are there specifics that you want to, do you want to have another view from the top of the bridge to like kind of get your imagination kickstarted a little? Um, we want to hear from you now. Mark, go for it. Yeah, the, the other thing I've, I've, I'm mindful of is that I love the gateway concept, but that's 50% of the time. The same amount of people that come into the city are going out of the city and going to pass under it. So it it's, Okay. It, I love that concept, but it's all, it only applies to 50% of the people that are observing that bridge. So I want to be mindful that that this is a this is an iconic piece, an iconic piece of architecture that's eventually going to sit about a third of the way into the city as you're traveling from south to north. So it yes, it's a it's a gateway project, but it it's to me it's much bigger than that. So I I it, it's it's le for me, it's less welcoming someone into the city. You're already into the city at least a mile or so, you know, by the time you're by the time Sherwood West develops. So I'm thinking a hundred years down the line about where this sits in the city and, and wanting to make sure that we don't don't just think of it as a welcoming monument, mm -hmm. that it's something to to make a bigger statement with. Mark, I had a thought on that too. Last night I was thinking about this. And one of the questions I was going to ask. What is this a gateway to? And uh, and I was thinking about the scale question, and I'm thinking about Sherwood's proximity to Newburgh and Tigard. This gateway, if you think bigger, uh, yes, it's a gateway to Sherwood, but it's also a gateway to the south in the wine country and the Chehalem Valley. And to the north, you're on the south side, the metro area. In some ways, you're a gateway to the, the whole Portland metro area for travelers on 99W. And so, again, it's that scale question. What is What are you a gateway to? And what uh, how do you design it so that it reflects the values of your community? Yeah, I love what Bob just said, the reminder of, hey, think about what's special to Sherwood about Sherwood and what do we want to reflect in that architecture, and not architecture, but in the artwork about Sherwood. So I, I like that grounding that Bob Bob reminded us about. Mm -hmm. I throw in one 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 really quick thing that came up in one of our meetings earlier this week is that think about also think about the artwork from the standpoint of the pedestrians. Um, it's not it's not all about the vehicle. It's also about the pedestrians and the bicyclists that are going to be using the facility itself. So just a reminder. Yeah, if you think about 
the bridge itself as an artistic value, the scale of the bridge is appropriate for the vehicles. They're, they're traveling at speed, they're coming through. They have, they won't see smaller details. They won't see small artwork. They won't see, uh, generally, they won't have the ability to focus very long on any type of landscaping. So the bridge itself is a piece of art that, you know, stands alone to identify itself as a gateway. But the pedestrian scale, that opens the door up to everything else. And Kurt's right. That's where you get the bicyclists. You get the, the walking commuter. You get the, uh, the people who want to go see um, natural areas that you get. Or even commute between, you know, the high school and the YMCA and interior, you know, stuff to out, out, outer places. Um, there's two different levels of scale here. And we have to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And thinking about it also from the high school user's perspective too. Emily, do you mind if I put you on the spot for a minute? And if not, you don't need to, but I am curious, or Jim, like the high school students that will be walking across the bridge, thinking about their experience, what would they value in this experience of the bridge? Um, I think for high schoolers, at least, I don't, I don't really know, like just having it be like, exciting or like welcoming I guess and I was thinking on like the ramp going down towards the high school it'd be cool if the like wall facing towards the high school had something dedicated to the high school almost like artwork wise mm -hmm. I think that would be cool mm. yeah interesting yeah and what might that look like is that I don't can you um Trying to think, I'm trying to imagine what that wall looks like myself based on the slide that we saw. But um, how, how long is that wall, um, team? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Is that hard to, <laughs> it's hard to I, characterize. Him. John, I think we still need, we have some finessing to do on that line because I think a, yeah. a lot of that, what was showing up as wall there, we can actually deal with, with grading. But with that said, you know, I think there's an opportunity there for maybe doing, you know, basically concrete seat walls or something like that, where you could certainly do some type of artwork. Mm -hmm. I'm looking, and I, I got Mike nodding his head. So I, I think as a civil engineer, I did all right answering that one. Good job, <laughs> could you tell us what a concrete seat wall is for the common, for the, like the lay person? I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave that for Mike because he's okay. a landscape architect. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's a seat wall, Mike? A uh, concrete seat wall is uh, usually a linear element along a pathway uh, that um, allows people, it's at seating height, like 18 to 21 inches, and um, allows for <coughs> kids to sit along the wall and either enjoy lunch or have a conversation. So it, it's not as comfortable as a bench, but it, it certainly it can be integrated into a landscape much easier. So it has similar uh, functionality. Okay. And what kind of art could it accommodate perhaps? Is that, is that maybe what Emily's thinking? How, how could it be artified or how can it be beautified or if that's the right word, what, what's possible? That's, Unless, only, that's only limited to our imagination. Uh, okay. It's quite open. It can be a base for uh, uh, all sorts of applied arts, uh, you know, tiles, uh, imprinted art, uh, you know, using, um, we can uh, put, you can embed poetry within uh, the bench itself or the wall. Uh, you can have art attached to it, so it becomes a base. So it really, there's not a lot of limits there. Yeah. And I don't know, uh, John, did, do you have something there? No, I, I completely agree with you. I also think um, on the high school side, uh, as Emily mentioned, depending on how the landscaping works and the grading, we may not have a full complete railing there and a seat wall might provide enough safety and it could be a really nice amenity. But where we do provide railings, uh, you know, you could think about like what we saw in the video, just it's a bunch of just vertical elements called pickets with a, with a railing on the top that we see those railings every day. 
start to imagine what those vertical pickets actually could be instead, right? Could they be made to look like a bunch of reeds or grasses that are waving? So they're not just vertical bars, but they're sculptural. Or is the railing made of a, of a metal plate that has shapes cut out of it that's something beautiful and evocative of the natural world or emblematic of the high school? So um, seawalls are very attracted to skateboarders. And so <laughs> that's another area where you can have some pretty cool art. You can have skateboard stops with uh, unique pieces of art placed every four feet along the wall to uh, deter that. Mm -hmm. Those could be bronze elements or a variety of uh, materials. Yeah, those vertical pickets, I'm not sure I'm able to visualize those personally, but I wonder if committee members have any, do you have any follow-up questions about what those are, what those could look like? And this is just, I'm curious if that should be, a, if we could show an example of that visually, if that's desired, if not, that's fine too. I'm just curious to, I wanted to pose that to the committee. Okay. I would say with our, with our tie to the toilet and refuge and the reeds in our city emblem and stuff that would be great if the because i'm thinking they're the metal pieces that rise up and if they were shaped like you know natural things i think that would give an appealing uh, thing there and then with the with the artwork I, I think having you know high school students be involved in developing some panels or mosaics or something uh, the one that jumps in my mind is uh wilsonville uh south wilsonville the underpass there has animals and and stuff like that and a very natural theme and you know, having the high school art students involved in something like that would be would pretty be pretty cool for a, a long time. Mm -hmm. Right. It is. Yeah, and you're both touching on the themes of nature and family friendly, which Katie had brought up as themes that she heard this summer through the community, which is interesting to note as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So without, yeah, without wishing to bias anybody too much, I, I'll just show a couple of images that randomly were produced by Google, um, if that's okay. Just to show what I'm talking about. I think everybody saw the, in the video, if you recall, the, the rail. It's almost like the sort of, if you look in the dictionary of, for handrail, you see that, just a bunch of vertical metal bars with a, a, a railing across the top. Um, but if you look at these, are not the highest quality images in the world, but here is a, a railing, which is a structure. It's got vertical posts and it's got a railing across the top and, and the bottom. And the infill are these plates with different artistic shapes cut out of them. So that's just an example of the way you make a railing and integrate something interesting into it. The other thing I mentioned where the pickets could not be just a bunch of regular bars, but could be a little more sculptural and take on forms and shapes of nature or evoke something. Here's one example of something like that. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. It's not, it's not my artwork, so I won't be offended that nobody's saying anything. <laughs> okay. I think the <clears throat> notion of relating this to the fact that Sherwood has a national wildlife refuge in the city, that's pretty awesome. And, and somehow relating to that theme, um, I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Um, it, it gets at the nature, it gets at the city emblem, but the wildlife refuge, uh, most communities don't have that opportunity to celebrate something like that in their backyard. And so it's, it's worth considering as you guys think about how to apply art to the project. Does that resonate with this group? Would you th and do you think it would resonate? It's a great question, Mike, with the greater Sherwood community, something that the community's proud of, the refuge, and we want it reflected somehow, subtly or otherwise? I think there's a lot of things that the city has going for it 
not just the refuge, but also the Robin Hood Festival and its connection to, um, you know, Robin Hood and the, the concept of community in, in older, uh, you know, things. Uh, I don't want to say it. It's extending their community connections beyond the boundaries of the city to other cities, even foreign cities and peoples who are who have similar interests or have completely different interests. But the connectivity doesn't stop at the boundary of the city. There's that. Um, you know, there's a heritage element with the city, uh, the cannery. That's, you know, part and parcel of what the cannery is based on. So I think there's more elements here than strictly one. And you can, and it might be something that the citizens need to think about is what do they want to reflect? Is it one item or is it multiple items? And how does that all work into where they're going and what they're doing with, with their, their uh, community? What's the future of it? What's the history of the past? I think the students of the high school, you know, they need to be involved with this because they need to have some connectivity to it that expresses their desires, their future, their aspirations and goals. Well, and I think to that point as well, it's literally the reason for the bridge. That school is the reason why that bridge exists today. So I think that's a great point. And um, part of the I, reason. I'm sorry, Doug. Part of the reason. It's not the entire part. reason. Well, I, don't, I don't think that bridge would be there if the school was not there. It was not. I don't want to argue about this. It's fine. No, as the, as the not, body that, as, as one member of the body that made the decision, it is not there 100% because of the school. It is a combination <laughs> of factors, definitely including the school. Yeah. The other thought I had was, Mike, I, I see the the reserve is the gateway on the north part of town. And so I I almost I, I don't want to waste space on uh, 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 accentuating the reserve that's already in the north part of town again on the south part of, part of town. But that's just my perspective. Go with that. Uh, oh, go yeah, ahead. I was going to jump in and say, you know, something historically that people tend to forget about but for a long time, onions onions was a huge crop grown in the Sherwood area. For years, there was the onion festival. So historically, the Robin Hood festival, onions, uh, we wanted connectivity from the park and rec side of it way before the high school was even thought of to be over there. So I agree with Councillor Scott on, on that point. But the fact of the matter is it's there now. Uh, it's a huge thing because prior to that, we didn't have a way to get across Highway 99 without playing Frogger. And um, the high school is a big thing for that. But I think safety wise this is a huge thing and I'm glad I'm so glad we're doing it. Um, historically, though, there's a whole bunch of things tying in but I, to me personally they all tie back to nature and farming and, and even the, the forest I, mean, I right back to the Robin Hood forest those things all to me are a tie in I've been in Sherwood for about 20 years now and, and uh, it was small town. It still kind of has that small town but we also we want to remember our heritage and getting the kids involved. I think those are all great things, but something that ties the history with the future is what I would hope we look at. That's my two cents. Thank you, David. Do other members agree that there's a historical connection is important, is an important value to you as members, as well as the greater Sherwood community? Is that, because looking to the past and Bob mentioned looking to the future as well, what that might look like, okay. Um, I was going to add, when they were showing the little balconies on the bridge, I forgot what they were called, but that could be like an opportunity, like, you know how in Stella Olson, we have those signs, like the historical signs everywhere, I think it'd be cool if those were on the bridge or like at the ends of the bridge, like talking about the high school or something or about something about Sherwood, I think that'd be cool to add if they wanted to add like historical aspect to it. Nice. Nice. That's great. Yeah. Is that possible? They're called Belvedere's, is that correct? That little balcony, is that the right? Yeah, one? yeah, overlooks yeah, overlook. can, or balcony. We can call them anything we want, but. And that's a possibility is to a, a, a fix or, mm -hmm. yeah, great. Yeah. Okay. 
I love that idea. Thank you very much. That's a great idea. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Yeah. And to back up a moment to um, Mark's point of thinking about north side of town versus south side a little bit. So you had mentioned um, that the north side is kind of represented in a way with the refuge. What might the south, how might we include or represent the south? Was that the, con I wanted to make sure I'm paraphrasing that correctly. Is that kind of what you're getting at? No, what I was saying was I, the concept of incorporating refuge um, related imagery to me seems duplicative because the refuge is the northern gateway into the city. So I, I would much rather use that valuable space for other messaging than to repeat that the refuge is part of the city because it, it, it's right there for folks to see when you're coming in and out of the north. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Yeah, I, I kind of agree a little bit with Mark on that one. And I think there's certainly as, as some development happens on the northern end of Sherwood in the future, there's an opportunity for some of the similar kind of gateway landmark kind of signage and accoutrements to be developed there, you know, kind of at Tualatin and 99 in that area as it, as some of that gets developed that are more tied to the refuge. One thing on the south side of town and the bridge area that we haven't talked about kind of surprisingly to me is some of the wine country aspects because I, to me, if you, especially as you're leaving Sherwood in that direction, it really is the gateway, you know, to where the wine country starts and, and winery starts. So not saying that should be all of all of the, you know, the impacts, but it's another item to consider. Good point. Yeah. How do others feel about integrating a possible wine country feature or connection or aesthetic? Does that work to include that? That was the first time I heard about having an entry point on the on the we'll call it the south side of town there. And I like that, but then again, it was really pointed out that that line may move over time, and then it's not really an entry point anymore. It's kind of already in town, so I, I'm kind of mixed about how much we put into it. And then if we did put into it, I guess the sign that struck me the most was that one in the into the Portland area, the metal one, um, because I know I know when you start adding landscaping. Um, you start adding costs because there's maintenance and, you know, even when they say low, low maintenance man landscaping, a couple of years later, you got to go in there and prune and trim and, and replant and uh, it, it does get expensive and it creates more workload. So I guess I kind of like a metal or some sort of physical thing that's not going to require a lot of maintenance. Um, I don't know if Craig Sheldon and, and is still on here, but I know. Bob is, and I'm sure he's attuned to that for, for costs down the road. There's an ongoing cost with maintenance if you have, you know, live vegetation and, and things like that. So, but it's, it's something I think we should consider. I think you're, you're, you're looking at it the right way in that if you do landscaping as a, um, a visual type of uh, item that people look at you have to maintain it in that form that you initially set it up as it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't maintain itself in that form it, it grows yes i agree with that however um there are certain things where um i've seen i have seen where the landscaping is intended to grow such that it gives you your ultimate um, concept of, of that over time of whatever it is that you're trying to seek. And I would say I've been to some European towns where they've done that with, with oak trees and things like that, where the oak tree is small. As the town has grown, they have maintained this, this signature oak so that now it's a, you know, they expect it to be a mighty oak in 200 years and the town will have grown up around it. Everybody's going, this is our oak tree and it's grown with our community and our community's grown with the oak tree. So there's some connectivity there. Um, I'm just not, I, I don't think at this point you discount landscaping based solely on the maintenance cost again i think we keep the the juices flowing and then we figure out what the representation of that is 
of that item is, whether it's landscaping or structural item, to the citizens, to the city, answer the three questions, and then we figure out how much it's going to cost and whether the council wants to support that or not from a from a monetary point of view. Point taken. Well, well said. And this is from an engineer, and I don't know Dilly squat about art. <laughs> Sorry, just don't. <laughs> yeah. Are there any any other comments from the committee about types of art? Um, yeah, landscaping questions or themes, maybe for lack of a better word. Okay. This is Martin. Um, I'm driving. I hope you can hear me okay. We can. Um, one of the concepts that I think of as, you know, a, a father with three children is, you know, that family concept resonates with me, obviously. And the livability of Sherwood. So what makes Sherwood popular and, you know, family oriented womanhood and, and um, you know, who puts those on? That's the Chamber of Commerce and the you know, I know there's Rotary and there's other groups that help support, uh, you know, what goes on in Sherwood. Uh-oh. Along the city. Um, I'd say super vital to some of the sports um, groups and, and the high school sports and those, um, you know, youth activities that mean a lot to the community and, and drive people and citizens to want to come and live in Sherwood. Uh, so I, I, there's there's groups I'm missing, but I think that um, those should definitely be considered in this conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Martin. Okay, well, all right, I think, um, yeah. That we might be, if there's no final other questions or comments, does the project team, the presenters today, how, do we have, do you have any other? Well, I've got a question from okay. my perspective okay. is where do we go with this information? Yes, who uh, I would like to have the committee actually do some legwork with presenting some of their what they see and, and, and actually go out and sort of look at the web page and see what that item is that talks to them about their perspective of what they would like the art to be like to bring it back to the committee because if the committee is going out we're we're going to do stuff and maybe we can put it up on a web page connection so that you can go in there and you can say yeah i like that or i don't like that we can we can go that route but I don't want to be dictating my tastes onto you. I want the committee to sort of be telling me what they like and don't like. We'll make recommendations to help the process along, but I want the committee to go out and actually put some effort into identifying what they like and what they don't like and how it interacts with the, with the three questions and the community. What values do those things present to to you as the committee, you have more. Um, you have more on 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 in, online with this particular aspect of the project than I do. So uh, I'm looking for you to actually tell me where to go. Tell this commit. Tell this design team where to go and what to to provide you with. So you got to help us here. Does that make sense? Yep. I did, I did want to throw out a thought. <clears throat> um, we talked a lot about different themes of art. We talked about the wildlife refuge. We talked about the cannery and the city's heritage. We talked about nature, the Robin Hood Festival, uh, onion agriculture. I don't think you have to pick one to emphasize. I just want to just throw that out there that somehow you can incorporate as many themes as you want in art if it's done tastefully by a good artist uh, without it becoming a mishmash of messages. I think uh, mm -hmm. so we don't have to settle on just one or you can go with one or two, 
but uh, don't limit yourself to thinking that you can't apply some of these different uh, themes in the art that you choose to incorporate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. That's helpful. Expand the con the context, kind of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did somebody else? It seems like. Oh, okay. I thought maybe I saw a hand. Okay. Well, I think Mike actually just summed up pretty nicely the themes that we've heard over the last thirty minutes during this discussion, or possible, um, yeah, directions that we could go artistically. And so, I think maybe we're ready to wrap up here at 5 26 p.m so basically the next steps are we will reconvene this group in november and Kristen will pull you on a good time and date again we will have an online survey that will develop based on kind of what we hear from you in november and based on some of the concepts that we've developed over that time to kind of refine the the ideas or the plan if you will and then go to the public and kind of get a sense to make sure we're on the right track, that we're kind of tracking with what the um, public wants as well. And then we'll have another follow-up meeting, maybe not December, probably a bit later in early 2023. So keep that, that's kind of tentative at this point, but that's where we're at. And if you, if anybody has questions, meanwhile, you've got Kristen's contact information. She's your email liaison. She's uh, the great connector of the committee and this project team. So definitely reach out to her with other questions or ideas. And if you have, yeah, thoughts in the meantime, otherwise we'll reconvene in November. And yeah, so I think, yeah, that's good. Thank you, Travis, for sharing that slide. And what? who else, does anybody have any other, Bob, do you wanna wrap us up or? Yeah, I do. Okay. I, I, I want to emphasize that the next meeting in November may be a brainstorming session, but you need to do work between now and then. We all do. Um, and the, it's important to, to have you, the committee, be um, the sort of the guiding light for us, the guys who have to put it on the, the bridge and put it into the project and make it all come together or massage it into something that actually uh, represents several ideas, but um, we will do some work. That's our jobs to do that. But you as the committee, you as the representatives of the future, the current, the future of the, the city of Sherwood need to have, uh, you know, to really work towards that with us. So we need that input. We need that direct contact with you about what you see, what you like, and how you get that, I would suggest, is going out. You have to extend out and get those people, get your students. Emily, you're going to have to talk to, to people at the school. Um, Jim's going to have to do the same thing from different aspects. The, the Commerce Center, um, not the Commerce Center, I mean the Chamber of Commerce. They're going to have to go out and talk to the business community about well, what is it we reflect here that makes sure what a good place that to do business that is a community that is worthwhile in investing in. There, there's a whole bunch of stuff like that. We can't do that all by ourselves. And I don't think we should. I think this is where the citizens and the committee members step up and really take hold of this thing. Okay. Can I just add something real quick? Um, I would just add that some of it is just paying attention to your surroundings when you're out and about and noticing what has been done to bring art into and create that sense of place and create that space. So for example, if you're at City Hall and the library, noticing, oh, when we designed that building, there's imprints on the outside of the building that reflect leaves and reflect nature. And then you go into the building and you look up into the ceiling and it's supposed to look like trees going up into the ceiling. Um, and then over at the fireplace, there's leaves that are painted around the fireplace. So nature was kind of the theme when City Hall Library was created as well. And there's subtle elements. It doesn't have to be a huge hit you in the face. Um, add on here, because the bridge itself is so beautiful 
But I think it's just noticing when you're out and about how art has been implemented in different spaces and how we might learn from that and say, okay, well, or taking pictures of it. You know, I'm paying more attention as I'm driving by cool bridges or cool spaces and going, oh, look at that. I guess they did do something there. So um, we appreciate anything that you can bring to us that you find either that or doing searches online um, and then just coming back and sharing what you found. Or if it's easier for you to email it to me in the meantime, I'm happy to just start collecting things. And um, we can include that in our brainstorming session and share those slides. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kristen and Bob. We're kind of wrapping it up and giving the homework task gently to the group. <laughs> All right, great, good. Well, if there's nothing else, then I think I will bid you good night. And thanks so much for spending the last hour and a half with us. We've appreciated your attentiveness and your ideas and feedback. And we'll we'll see you in November. Okay. Thank you all. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you.